I'm Victoria Meredith, and during this session, I'm going to present five suggestions that might be helpful to you when rehearsing adult choirs. Number one, slow down. This is the one that's hardest for me. When I go into rehearsal, I'm always excited and happy to be there, and it's like everything goes in fast motion. I talk fast, and I move fast, and we work fast, and we get lots done in a little bit of time. But the difficulty is, that a lot of people in uh, an adult choir these days have a little trouble hearing. And if you talk that fast and you work that fast all the time, they really can't follow what you're saying. And so the challenge I find is to slow down instructions clearly uh, enough to be clearly heard and understood and yet still be engaged and excited about what you're doing. The other time it really helps to slow down is when you're giving pitches. Because if you just go, which note is yours? I don't know. Is more helpful for people to actually zero in on what their note is. So just slowing it down uh, can be helpful. Now another reason that this is uh, important is that as we age, it takes longer to process things. Uh, what information we take in takes longer to understand. The instructions we're given, the things we do like turning pages, following cues, following instructions, just take a little bit longer. I'm sure many of us have had this darling soprano in the front row who you have just said, we're gonna start on the top of page three and you're ready to give the downbeat and just, where are we? Where are we starting? And she's looking at the person on her right and the person on her left, and she's trying to figure out where, where and it's not that she wasn't paying attention and it's not that she doesn't care. It's just that things are slower and it's harder to focus and it's just harder to stay with. And so we have to just be patient. It really helps if you can keep a sense of humor and just give them some time. So um, consider just slowing things down, not getting too upset when people are right with you all the time. It's really not on purpose. And the other thing uh, in terms of slowing down a little bit, I find useful sometimes is sometimes doing um, fewer pieces so that I can spend more time on fewer pieces in order to allow secure learning to really take place instead of just learning everything as quickly as we can. Just slowing it down, maybe not doing quite as many pieces. So that's tip number one, slow down. And that's mostly for myself. Number two, when I'm learning a new piece or teaching a new piece, I really like to use uh, what a lot of people do, uh, which is a big picture, zoom in, big picture approach. So by that we mean first big picture is just sight read through the whole thing, so you get an idea of what the whole piece is. And that might happen in one rehearsal. You might not do anything else with that piece in that, that rehearsal. But then the next part, you start taking it all apart. You start working on the difficult sections, you divide it up into sections, you take the musical uh, elements separately, maybe work on the notes, then work on the rhythms, work on the text, put them together. And gradually then, we start putting bigger and bigger chunks of the music back together so that we end up, yet again, with the whole big picture. This time, hopefully, much better than the first time we had the big picture when we first sight read it because then we've worked through all of the things that are in it, but we can't just leave it there, we have to put it back together. So, big, little, big. Third uh, tip for rehearsing adult choirs, and I'd say of all the things that I'm gonna to say to you today, this is the most important, and that is to stay aware of the ranges of each part throughout the rehearsal. If you know that voices tend to go down as they age, the highest notes become less comfortable for most people no matter what part they're singing, then you don't want to leave any section singing too high for too long. It's much healthier vocally to move voices around. Have them singing across different ranges, have them also have periodic vo vocal rest. Otherwise, voices get fatigued, the, the sound gets tight, it gets out of tune. And I just want to mention that voice rest doesn't mean they stop singing so they start talking. It means actually not using your voice for a while. So it just can recover a little bit and then get back to work. 
The fourth tip has to do with um, the usefulness of knowing a little bit of adult learning theory and how adults learn, adult learning style. This is based on research in the field of education. Generally, adults want to know the why and how of what they're being asked to do. Now, it's certainly possible to go into way too much detail and to talk too much of your rehearsal. You don't want to waste your time doing that. But it is a great idea to explain a little bit about why you're asking them to do something, especially in exercises. Like, you, you explain why we do this exercise. Well, it moves, it works these muscles and it's going to help your high notes. Fantastic. They're right on board. Uh, but they, they really want to understand. They want to understand why and how to do things. The second part of this is assume intelligence and an interest in singing really well and in learning. I, I think adults are just the best learners. They are so keen to learn new things all the time. So um, help them with that. And also, they enjoy being in the choir. Otherwise, they don't have to be there. They wouldn't be there if they didn't enjoy it. And you should enjoy it just as much and let it show. Uh, you should, everybody should be having a pretty good time in choir. And I don't mean sitting there laughing. Well, sometimes we do that too. But it should just be a pleasure to do. And you, very often I hear, I hear people say, you know, I had a really bad day. I had a headache when I came in and all these things happened today. And then I, I almost didn't come to choir tonight because I just felt so bad. And I thought, oh, I have to go. And I came and now I feel so much better. And that's pretty common. And that's how it should be. You should feel better at the end of rehearsal than you do it at the beginning. Now, I just want to say one other thing about adult learning style that's not related to these previous things, but it really does become more difficult to memorize. So really give serious thought to uh, asking adult choirs to memorize new music, if that's part of what you do. And then the last tip has to do with logistical awareness. This is just practicality. Number one, vision. Many people are dealing with changes in their vision. So people are suddenly having bifocals or trifocals, and you add the lines of that to the lines of the staff, and it can get kind of complicated. It can get more difficult to read the music. And that's where it becomes very important to have excellent lighting, not just adequate lighting, but really good lighting. And sometimes we need larger print. We just need to be able to see the music well. Uh, similar to vision, people also experience hearing changes. And they tell us that if we live long enough, all of us will experience some hearing changes. Uh, sometimes when people don't hear as well as they once did, they tend to make up for that by over singing. And that's not what we want in the sound, that's not what you want for them vocally. So here's where you have to encourage people to know what it feels like to produce a really well-produced tone and, and what does a good sound feel like? You can't always go by what, what you hear. Um, when you're doing um, a rehearsal, if you're in a large space, sometimes you need to use a microphone, just so that it's not always fun. To, it's kind of interferes with rehearsing sometimes, but it really does help because people can understand and hear you much better. Uh, so people need to be able to hear, but they also need to be able to sing uh, based on how it feels as well as how it sounds to them. And just one other thing logistically, and that has to do with sitting and standing. Try to alternate between sitting and standing in both rehearsals and, if you can, in long performances. This is because of balance, especially if you're on risers or steps. Uh, a lot of times it's just not safe for people. Uh, and that's partly because their balance isn't as good as it used to be. Also, leg strength is not as strong as it used to be. And fatigue that just sets it. So in conclusion, just to review, the five main suggestions for rehearsing with adult choirs that I'd like to make to you are slow down, work big picture, zoom in, big picture, stay aware of ranges of each part, not just sopranos, but where each of the voices is lying within their own range. Think about how adults learn and be aware of logistics like lighting, hearing, seating. I hope that you'll take even one or two of these suggestions away with you and that it will make your work with your adult choirs even more successful and enjoyable. If nothing else, please try to remember not to leave any part singing too high for too long. Thank you and all the best to you and your choir.